Though it came out almost five years ago, and it wasn't the strongest of sets by a long shot, Ixalan was a set with some wonderful tribal themes. Merfolk added green to their color identity, and vampires added white to theirs. Dinosaurs finally became a creature type. In fact, several older lizard or beast cards got retconned into being dinosaurs. But the reason we're here today is because of pirates. We'd had pirates before, but they were few and far between. You couldn't really build a pirate tribal EDH deck prior to Ixalan. But all of a sudden, pirates spanned the gamut of the Grixis color identity. And the leader of the pirates was the legendary Admiral Beckett Brass. An entire coalition of pirates answered to her. The Deadeye, the Dire Fleet, the Fathom Fleet, the Straw Hats, and the Storm Fleet. And it's no wonder, just look how awesome and imposing she looks. Admiral Beckett Brass is a 4-mana 3-3 legendary human pirate that gives all other pirates you control plus 1 plus 1. Additionally, at the beginning of your end step, you gain control of any target permanent controlled by a player who was dealt combat damage by three or more pirates this turn. Take what you can. Give nothing back. Okay, so what problems will our deck face and what do we need? First of all, we want a lot of pirates in order to attack our opponents every turn. But the trigger only happens if we hit our opponents and deal combat damage with at least three pirates per opponent. So we need to come up with a way to make our army of untrustworthy scallywags unblockable, or to ensure our opponent's creatures are tapped. We are also weak to board wipes, so we'll want a few counterspells to protect our crew. We also want to be as thematic as possible, easier since we got a ton more pirates in Commander Legends. Most of them are even the right color identities. So for this video, I've created two deck lists, one with a $250 budget and one with a $100 budget. For the most part, the decks are exactly the same. The only difference is the land, so we'll go over those first. But before we do, let's keep in mind our checklist. 50 mana sources, usually split between 37 lands and 13 pieces of ramp, 10 pieces of card advantage, 8 to 10 pieces of spot removal, 2 to 3 board wipes, 2 pieces of graveyard hate, one sudden I win card. Let's start with the budget mana base, then I'll go over what we'll swap out for the more expensive one. First of all, we've got a command tower, secluded courtyard, crumbling necropolis, unclaimed territory, exotic orchard, temples, bridges, guild gates, gain one lands, a rogue's passage, a bajuka bog is our first piece of graveyard hate, six islands, four swamps, and seven mountains. For the most part, these two color lands will run you about 25 cents each. But if budget isn't a concern, here are the swaps I'd make. Exotic Orchard becomes Xander's Lounge. I love Exotic Orchard, but it doesn't always tap for the colors we need it to. Next up, we're swapping the temples for shocks, and I'm sure you can see why. Bridges get replaced with Bond Lands. Guild gates will be swapped out for check lands. Finally, the gain one lands will be replaced with Innistrad slow lands. Making these upgrades will increase the speed and reliability of your deck, but it does make the deck a lot more expensive. However, the rest of the cards in both decks are exactly the same. So to start, let's take a look at our mana ramp. We've got Soul Ring, Wayfarer's Bauble, Arcane Signet, Demir Signet, Rakdos Signet, Izzet Signet, Talisman of Dominance, Talisman of Indulgence, Talisman of Creativity, as well as some treasure creators. After all, what's the fun in building a pirate deck unless you've got at least some treasure cards? Malcolm Keen-Eyed Navigator, Captain Lannery Storm, Brass's Bounty, Grim Hireling, and Tempting Contract. To dig through our deck, we've got two tutors in Wishclaw Talisman, and Forerunner of the Coalition. We're also running a March of the Drowned for a bit of graveyard recursion. For additional card draw, we have Breaches, Brazen Plunderer, Ruin Raider, Deadeye Plunderer, Big Score, Pirate's Prize, Unexpected Windfall, Charter Course, Open into Wonder, and the perfectly on theme Coastal Piracy. Our interaction consists of Hostage Taker, 
and Angrath the Flame Chained to help steal more stuff, and a Shiny Impetus to get rid of annoying blockers. For counter magic, we're running an Offer You Can't Refuse, Negate, and Wash Away, which may be the most underappreciated counterspell printed in recent memory. For spot removal, we've got Terminate, Abrade, the Devil, Chaos Warp, and Feed the Swarm. Finally, a Siren's Ruse for protection. We're not running any traditional board wipes, but we do have three that help clear paths for our attackers. We're running Fiery Cannonade, Vona's Hunger, and Crippling Fear. Even if they don't take out all of our opponent's creatures, they should weaken the ones still alive so that we can attack favorably. Speaking of attacking, the main cards we'll want to tutor for are the ones that let us attack favorably. We're pirates after all, so we want to be pillaging as much booty as possible. With that in mind, we've got Bedlam and Teleportal. Obviously, Bedlam is better for the long term, but Teleportal can win us the game in a pinch. And now we come to our actual pirates. First up, we have Siren Stormtamer who can help protect ourselves or our commander in a pinch. Captain Vargas Wrath serves as another Lord effect. Dire Fleet Daredevil lets us steal spells from our opponent's graveyard, while Dire Fleet Poisoner is essentially a removal spell on a body. Fathom Fleet Captain helps us create more pirates, and Warkite Marauder ensures that any big scary blockers our opponents may have are now useless. Coastline Marauders is the perfect card to deploy against those pesky green players and their out-of-control ramping. Corsair Captain acts as another Lord and gives us a treasure token. Lightning Grid Crew is here for extra damage. Protean Raider lets us copy any creature on the battlefield. Stormfleet Sprinter is unblockable, while Azure Fleet Admiral helps us become the Monarch and get it back. Dire Fleet Neckbreaker gives us a ton more damage. Amber Wild Captain for more Monarch shenanigans. Fathom Fleet Swordjack works great with our treasure sub theme. Merchant Raiders to help tap down blockers. And Coercive Recruiter for more commandeering. Dire Fleet Ravager ends games quickly, as does Port Razor's additional combat steps. Finally, Angrath's Marauders to double our damage output. So let's take a look at the deck and see how we did. 51 mana sources, not counting card draw effects. Perfect. 11 pieces of card advantage. 12 pieces of interaction, not counting our commander. 3 board wipes. 1 piece of graveyard hate. And 2 sudden eye win cards in Bedlam and Teleportal. All in all, our deck checks all the boxes and is a ton of fun to play. I get the feeling that this is another deck my wife will probably steal but that's okay, so long as she has fun with it. After all, the only thing more satisfying than blowing up your opponent's best cards is stealing them for yourself. We are pirates, after all. And no, I didn't forget about Commandeer. I left it out on purpose because it's a $25 card and that would have wrecked my budget. It's the same reason I didn't include Ragavan or Dockside Extortionist. Though if you want to include them in your list, feel free. Thanks for tuning in. Once again, a huge shout out to my editor Cute Stuff. I couldn't make these videos without her. If you'd like to hire her to edit your own videos, there's a link to her Fiverr page below. I'm doing a push and trying to post new videos every weekday for the next few months, so look forward to lots of new videos in the near future. Or you can click here for more Commander content. I've also started a Patreon. You can click the link below or go to patreon.com slash Stay safe and I'll see you all again next time on Commander by Danan.